everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Now I'm remaking this tutorial because since the time that I first uploaded my tutorials on YouTube, which was a good couple of years ago now, a lot of things have changed in the industry, okay? So although the video that you probably watched, one of my first ones where I'm doing a full set, um, has had some really, really good positive feedback on it, a lot of the techniques in there um, I'd no longer do because like I said the industry is advanced so for example I was using 0.2 thickness back then I wasn't mixing curls um, everything that sort of is advanced I've advanced with as well back then I wasn't an accredited trainer to the industry but since then I've gone away I've been on lots of different training courses I've gone and got my teaching certificates I now run a training academy which is the Institute of Eyelash Excellence. I also fly all over the world and train people as well as training people from my establishment and still working full time on clients as well as running Facebook mentoring groups which people can join, selling manuals and selling DVDs. So it's been a real busy couple of years as you can, um, as you can imagine. But today I just wanted to kind of redo one of the videos that I did. So I'm not going to take it off YouTube because it's got a lot of views on it and the feedback has been positive. But I just wanted to talk to you about the updates within the industry and show you different ways in which we do things. Okay, so what I'm going to show you today is, is a full set. Although I'm not going to be mixing curls, um, I am going to just be using one standard curl on this client because this is a... Uh, this is a is a real appointment. Okay, I've not just set this up for you. This uh, this is one of my clients, and I am I'm working on my client at this time. So I've prepped the eyes. Um, so I I don't go too much into prep. I think sometimes you can over prep. We've done oil free makeup remover, and then I've come in and I've scrubbed the lashes with hot water. Now I love using hot water because um, heat opens the cuticle of the hair shaft on the lashes, which then makes it porous. And then when you go to place a glue on it, it then closes the cuticle and you actually get a really, really good retention out of using that. So that's what I've done and now I'm going to be ready to come in and lash. As you can see I've drawn my lengths on my pads and I always do this because it gives me a guide of what I'm doing. It means that I never get lost um, and both eyes are always symmetrical. Um, with this client here Sophie, um, she is going out at the weekend so she wants her, her lashes for a glamorous event. So what I'm actually going to be using on her are flat lashes. They're not my favourite, but they are very, very popular um, amongst my clients. The reason I don't like them is because, due to the advancements within the lash industry, I'm now using very, very thin lashes on clients, and I love that beautiful fluffy look that you get. Whereas the lashes that I'm going to use today, um, although they're a 0.15 thickness, so I never work any thicker than a 0.15 thickness, because most people's natural lashes cannot support it week after week. Um, so although these, although these are a 0.15 thickness, they're actually a flat lash, so they almost look like they've been run over by a bulldozer or like a rolling machine to make them flat. So they actually give the appearance of like a 0.2 or a 0.25 thickness, but without having the weight. So they're great for clients that just want that little extra bit of glamour in amongst a set without it weighing it down. So I'm going to be using them. They do have a little bit of a sheen on them, um, as you can see. These are very, very new out, okay, so um, I think over time the quality of them will get better. They are still a good quality lash, but I think there are some developments that they could be doing with them. But I'm just going to demonstrate with you what I do today. So I've drawn my, my um, lengths on there, and we're going to go in and work in. And this is how I work on a client. Because I'm right-handed, I like to work from right to left. So I will lash one eye, then I will lash the other backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. And I like to split the eye into five zones. So I have a zone here, which I call zone one, a zone here, which is zone two, a zone right back in, um, slap bang in the middle, which is zone three, a zone here, which is zone four, and an inner corner zone, which is zone five. And I have that on both eyes, and they are an imaginary zone, okay? And that is how I like to work. So I'm going to be working from right to left so that I never get lost. So I've grabbed my lash. I'm going to go in and isolate into zone 1. In my glue. And place it on. Now I'm working with a very fast setting glue at the moment. Which means that I do no shimmying, I do no stroking of the lash. I go straight in and I place it on. And I like to work with a glue ring because everything is nice and close. And I don't know if you can see me, 
in the camera but I am also wearing a carbon filter mask because I need to protect myself from the fumes. So I'm now going into zone 2 on the right eye which I can see my zone 2 is about a 12mm. I've got a little bit too much there so I'm just going to take it off on the top of the pad. Placing my lash on, holding the isolation to make sure it's nice and dry, and just repositioning where I want it. Into zone 2 on the left eye. And I am controlling the direction of the lashes. So I do not let the natural lash dictate where my extension goes. Come into zone 3 which on my pad is going to be a 10mm. Need to push that over a little bit to make it face straight. So because I've just done that zone on that eye, I knew exactly I needed to grab a 10mm on this eye. So by having a system means that I never ever get lost. And I like to work from one eye to the other because it means that one eye gets a chance to dry before I go back on to working onto the other eye. And it also means that I continuously build symmetry on the eyes. So both eyes are going to look completely symmetrical because I'm working exactly the same on both eyes. And the reason I do this is because if for whatever reason my client might have to get up mid-appointment and leave maybe there'd be an emergency or something you don't know if you lash one eye only and your client had to get up halfway through what are you going to do if she's only got lashes on one eye so if you lash like this then you can make sure that both eyes are always symmetrical and you can see that one didn't grab there, so I'm just going to go and grab a little bit more glue, which is fine because my glue was seamless anyway. I'm coming out from underneath. And for some reason that one doesn't want to grab, so I'm going to get rid of that. And go again. Maybe there was a little lash that I couldn't see that was coming up from underneath. So I'm going to avoid that one for the time being. At this stage I pick out the easy lashes, okay? So I'm picking out the difficult lashes and making the job hard for myself. The easy ones. And the last thing into zone one or zone five, I should say. Doesn't matter how you number them. Because this is a super fast drying glue, if I don't get it on quick enough, it will dry. So in one of my old videos I said that I don't like to mix curls. Well that's changed, a lot has changed in the industry, there's a lot of change with me over time. I love to mix curls, I'm not actually doing it with this set at the moment, but a lot of the times I do. Normally I'll use a stronger curl on the outer corner and a flatter curl in the inner corner, gives you a beautiful cat flick. You can use stronger curls in the middle of the eye and flatter curls on the outer corners to lift the eye upwards. There's all sorts of things that you can do in order to use lots of different curls in amongst the set. So now I've done both eyes with five zones, I go and start again. So I'm going to go back into zone one. In my go. And you do need to hold your isolation for a good couple of seconds. Remember that glue is still going to be wet, although these glues are fast drying. If they were too fast drying, we wouldn't actually be able to get the lash on because it would have dried before we get it there. So we have to hold that isolation. And with that one, you can see that actually I've actually pulled the lash apart because there's no lashes. These lashes here are already pointing that way. So you don't need to isolate either side. I can actually just pull that aside and it's not contacting anything else. You can see here that that one's just dropped down and stuck to the pad. So I'm going to grab, push on the pad and pull it up. Go back into zone 2. I'm going to grab a 13 again because I'm actually now starting to fill the gaps a little bit. Just 
position that one where I want it to go. And you can see how I don't faff with the lashes, you know, I'm not going in, I'm not stroking the lashes, I'm not doing this, okay, I don't need to. I know that there are lashes there available, so as soon as I've placed one, I then come back, grab my next lash, I take a little look at where I'm going, and go in. So whilst I'm holding the isolation, I can have a little look over to that eye, see exactly where I'm going to go, start identifying which lash it is that I'm going to isolate and go for. So the aim is to work quickly but work efficiently. Now your work needs, still needs to be clean but we need to be quick. And this is our job at the end of the day, we've got money to earn. If we take too long, we won't earn our money. So we need to learn to work quickly. And I've got lots of videos on my channel which show you about speed lashing, the best product. So I recommend having a good watch of them all. So there'll be lots of little hints and tips on there that will help you improve your speed. And a lot of it has got to do with the way in which you sit. Um, the products that you use as well, you know you need a fast drying glue. I don't know if you've noticed, I don't always apply on top. A lot of the time I actually come from underneath the, the lash and place underneath. But sometimes you'll just find on some natural lashes, it's actually easier to come from underneath and attach. You can see that base is not quite on, so I'm going to try and reposition it, but it's not having it. So I've just peeled that off, I'm going to go again. It's really important that those bases are on. If those bases are not on, those <coughs> lashes won't stay on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue through and keep building my set. Now would be a really good time just to give them a good brush. Now I'm not brushing too hard here, just enough so that the lashes are separated and that if they were to come out, because I hadn't attached them properly, they would do. I'm just giving a good brush, nice and separate, and then I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to build a structure of lashes and then I'm going to come back with my camera and talk to you about what I've done. Welcome back ladies. So what I've been doing for the last sort of... 15-20 minutes is just building a structure um, with my lashes so I've gone in and built like the main frame so I don't know how many lashes I've got on each eye but as you can see we're looking like we've got a pretty decent set of lashes here okay and what I've been doing as we go along is I've been brushing my lashes through just making sure that we've got no stickies which is lashes stuck together um, and it just keeps them nice and straight so that I can see if any lashes are out of position and I like my lashes to be very very uniformed what I have here is a dental mirror, okay, and the reason why I like to use a dental mirror is I can shine it underneath the lashes like this and it allows me to see where I've got gaps that I've missed because obviously from this angle I can't see. So I'm shining that under both eyes, so I'm having a good look. And also it allows me to see if my lashes are sitting uniform, so if they're sitting correctly. Sometimes you get lashes, well lashes grow in three layers, and sometimes you get on a client lashes that are very very high up in the layer and from this angle you can't see it whereas if you shine a dental mirror you can see where you've possibly stuck one too high so as I'm having a good look I can see that actually all of those are fine I'm happy with that and I'm going to go back into lashing so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to start creating a little bit of density in my set okay so I'm going to start coming in with shorter lashes what I've done is I've built a structure of long lashes, so let's say when you look front on the client you're going to be able to see a nice structure of lashes. But I want to create a little bit of darkness and a little bit of fullness within that set, and the way to do that is to add shorter lengths in amongst. If I was just to keep going with, with one length, that would be fine if that's what the client wanted, but most clients want length and they want a little bit of fullness. So by 
putting in different lengths in amongst the set, we can create a little, the illusion of a little bit more density and give the plant a little bit of fullness. So now what I'm going to do is where I've got my zones marked on the pads, I'm going to come in and put a lash length in that's one millimetre shorter than what I've got on the pads, okay? So for example, I've got 13 on the outer corner here, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a 12 millimetre in this 13 zone. Then with the other one, I'm in my 13 zone, but I've got my 12mm in my hand. Try that again. In my blue. Now I am just filling the gaps. I'm going back into my 13 zone but with a 12mm because I can see there's a bit of a gap there. Like I said, this is just going to add the illusion of a bit of dimension towards our set. Not all clients are going to want this. You know, if you've got a client that is naturally very dark, She's already going to have that illusion of density because she's got very dark eyes, so you wouldn't need it. But with my client Sophia, she's quite fair, so she needs a little bit of darkness in her set. So now I've come into my 12mm zone, and I'm going to go one centimetre shorter. So what I've picked up in my hand is in the 11mm. I've actually found a little sticky there, so I'm going to get rid of that lash and just move that sticky there we go. I've got to go back in and grab my 11. quite a lot of lashes it's getting a little bit more difficult for me now to find available lashes so as you can see I'm just doing a little bit more work here and what I'm also finding is that my glue is starting to go gloopy so this tells me that I need a new one so as you can see I actually work with a glue ring and a palette and I do sell these so if you contact me on my um, Facebook page, Eyelash Extensions in Kent, and I can recommend where, where I sell these. You can buy them for yourself, and they're a product that I designed. They didn't exist on the market. So I've grabbed myself a new glue ring. I have a lot of them that I prep, just like this. We never ever top our glue up. We always get a brand new glue ring, and we put a tiny little bit in there. And I like everything to be here because it's all nice and close. I can see what's going on. And it saves me having to move too much. And like I said, there is a tutorial on my um, on on my um, YouTube, which will show you the reasons why I have this set up the way I do. Going back into my twelve zone. really work for that one. That's not a problem. Back into my 12 zone, but I'm picking up my 11. I'm going to my 11 zone now with a 10 millimetre. Into my eleven this side with my ten millimetre. And 
go into my 10 zone with my 9mm. Same on this side, 10mm zone but with a 9mm lash. Take off that excess, we don't want that one there. I can see that we've got a little baby lash. So it's coming across there, which is stopping me. So I'll put that on, so I'm just working with that. I'm going to start again. You will get it on there. You know, and for sometimes it does happen, you just have to work around it. Now I'm going to go into my 9mm zone, but I'm not going to take the length shorter, just because it's going to look strange. When you get too short and you start adding on really short lengths, it just looks weird. So 9mm zone is going to stay exactly the same, all the way up into the inner corner. This is a good time to give them another brush. Like you say, gentle brush. Okay. You know, I see some people on my courses, they're like brushing really hard. Well, you, know, you need to be careful because eyelashes are delicate. Okay? And I see them, they brush and they touch the client's skin. Well, remember, the eye area is very, very delicate, so be gentle. And when you go to brush with this, I see people try trying to brush like this, well I've, I've got a nose in the way, so just put the brush in your other hand and come on that side and just roll it through. There we go, I can come in with my dental mirror again, have a good check to see how we're getting on. Nice. And then I'm just going to carry on, I'm going to carry on doing that until I've built pretty much my structure all the way through so I'll have a full length and full density and then I'm going to um, turn the camera back on so you can have a good look at what we've done. So welcome back, I've gone through my set now and in every zone I've placed one millimetre shorter obviously apart from my nine millimetre and eight millimetre which are in the in the corners and now what I'm going to do is I've given them a brush I've got my dental mirror that I've been through again just keep checking as I go now I'm going to go through and as I've been going through I've been seeing that I've got little lashes like little sort of not baby baby lashes but just shorter lashes but in order to create a lot of density I actually want to put an extension on these I'm just going through now and finding them I've got a nine millimeter here because a nine millimeter is a nice short lash and because it's only nine millimeters it's quite lightweight so it's a great little lash to put on any of these smaller, shorter lashes that can't support a lot of weight like the more mature lashes would do. So I'm just going through, having a little look to see what we've got left here. And it is just a case of just having a good fish through just to see what is still available and if you get yourself a really good light um, which you know is paramount when it comes to lashing you'll be amazed at how many lashes you can actually find when you have what I call a good old fish in there people actually do have a lot of natural lashes you just have to find them and that's where it can be a little bit time consuming but if you keep on with it you will find them just like that little one there and all of this just helps to build even more density and darkness that's in that set still with the nine millimeters i'm just working my way Outside to inside, 
see there's none there, just keep going. And when you're doing a full set you will sometimes find that one eye will have more lashes than the other. Now it's tempting to try and lash all the lashes that they are, but if you have got one eye that has got a lot more lashes than the other, if you do that, you're going to have an uneven eye. So if you remain very, very strict with your technique, which is what we're doing here and working from eye to eye, if you've exhausted all of the lashes on one eye, which I think this left eye has got less than the right eye, then you stop lashing and you know that your set is going to be completely symmetrical. Just getting towards the inner corner now. Same one there. Keep going through, back to where we started. Don't get that isolation the first time, you're just going to have to keep working with it. I did have a little bit of a faff there, but I was just making sure that there was going to be a lash there. Deal with my nines. in my lashes so I have to have a good old fish sticky there so I'm actually going to get rid of that one there have a little fish because I know that I've only got a small area here so I'm going to try and find one see if I can pop it out on his eye which I've done Grab my nine. I've gone into my glue straight away because I know that one was sitting out on its own. Have a little look here because I know this is going to be an eight millimetre. I'm going to make sure I've got one layer switch I have. So go back and find it. There it is in the glue. still a little bit wet I'm going to give this one a brush and I'm going to go through and do my last check now so I'm making sure that we've got no sticky so no lashes stuck together so I'm just separating the lashes using two tweezers And if you've got a good glow, quick drying glue and you've been working cleanly and leaving the isolation open for long enough, you shouldn't have too many stickies. It's really important that you do go through and you do check the stuck lashes because if lashes are stuck together they're going to inhibit the growth of the neighbouring lashes and they're going to start pulling out other extensions and other natural lashes and this is what gives 
individual eyelash extensions a bad name when you don't check for stickies or when you get technicians that just whack them in anywhere and don't do isolation of the natural lashes. So you do have to make sure that you go through and you do this last stage. One there. And sometimes you do just get them as long as you go through and check. Some nice brush. Make sure that none are going to come out. Check with my dental mirror again to make sure there's no obvious gaps. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just coming in with my dental mirror and I'm just lifting the lashes with a nice curved pair of tweezers to make sure that I've got none stuck to the pads and that I can see there's no bottom lashes that have come unst uh, unstuck from underneath the pads and got stuck to the top lashes. So I'm happy with that but I'm going to very gently take the pad off. So I put my finger on the eye and this stops the client wanting to open it up. And I'm just gently pulling away, making sure that I can see that there's none stuck to the pad. Put that off. I'm just going to use the back of that just to take off that lash. I'm going to pop it over here just in case I might need to reuse these again. You know, if I was unhappy, if there was a missing inner corner or something, I might need to reuse my pad. Again, grab the inner corner, finger on the eye, gently pulling away, keeping a good look. I'm going to give it one more brush through. Like so. And then what I usually do now is I normally pack up. So it gives me sort of three or four minutes to pack up. And whilst I'm packing up and cleaning up my workstation, my client's just laying there. And it just means that the glue is going to be nice and dry by the time the client comes to open their eyes. So they're unlikely to get any sting in. And it just means that you can get everything packed up out of the way so you haven't got any tweezers or bits of rubbish lying around. So I will join you back in a minute. So welcome back. So I've packed up most of my, my bits. I've come in, I've given my client a bit of a puff. I'm going to have another brush. I always say you can never have enough brushing. Okay. And then we're going to say to our client, when you're ready, slowly open your eyes. So if you want to open, have a good old blink, readjust to the light. That's it. And that, ladies, is how I do a full set on a client um, using a new thing, which is flat lashes. And I, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.